Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. This is related to the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system, this is one of the other systems on exam day. You can expect somewhere between four and seven questions related to this. So certainly not one of the biggest sections on the exam, however, still important. Uh, one of the changes they made a few years ago, they used to lump in lymphatics with the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. Instead, now there is a dedicated portion of the exam, four to seven questions related to the lymphatic system. So definitely something to keep in mind as you're going through your studies. But again, as you study proportionally, just keep in mind that although it is on the test and it is important, it's not one of the huge systems on the exam. As I always say, definitely want to study proportionally with cardio, musculo, and neuro, representing about 75% of your time on exam day. So we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, but before we do, just a quick reminder, head over to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast in order to access all of our freebies. We've got a few fun promos going on over there right now. Be sure to check that out. Uh, again, ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. All right, here is your practice question for today. As per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we will talk about it together. Which of the following guidelines for lymphedema compression bandaging is most appropriate to provide to a patient during initial lymphedema interventions? So which of the following guidelines for lymphedema compression bandaging is most appropriate to provide to a patient during initial lymphedema interventions? One, Bandaging pressure should be least at the proximal portion of the limb. Two, bandaging should be worn up to 12 hours daily. Three, bandaging should have a high resting pressure and low working pressure. And four, bandaging wraps should stretch 80 to 90% of their unstretched length. So again, which of the following guidelines for lymphedema compression bandaging is most appropriate to provide to a patient during initial lymphedema interventions? One, bandaging pressure should be at least should be least at the proximal portion of the limb. Two, bandaging should be worn up to 12 hours daily. Three, bandaging should have a high resting pressure and low working pressure. And four, bandaging wraps should stretch 80 to 90% of their unstretched length. All right, so this question obviously asking about how to apply and what are the appropriate guidelines for lymphedema compression bandaging especially during the initial intensive intervention phase, the goal is to try to reduce the fluid load in, lymph, in the lymphedema or in the lymph, lymphedematous tissue or limb. And so the correct answer here is that bandaging pressures should be least at the proximal portion of the limb, indicating that bandaging pressure should be the most at the distal segment of the limb. So this is just what they call a pressure gradient. A pressure gradient, and this makes a lot of sense, right? That if you're trying to to mobilize the swelling and edema from the limb, you will have the most pressure at the distal segment with the least pressure at the proximal segment, creating what's called a pressure gradient to help push the fluid from distal to proximal, because that's always the goal. The goal is always to move the fluid or the edematous lymphatic fluid from the distal segments to the more proximal segments. Now, this just kind of to, to touch very lightly on what we've talked about before, this is where it's critical to remember during manual lymphatic drainage, so now we're talking about manual lymphatic drainage technique, essentially we'll call it lymphatic massage, although it's not really massage, it's, it's manual lymphatic drainage technique or soft tissue mobilization. The goal with that is you must clear the proximal segments first. So it's like a traffic jam. You gotta clear out the front of the traffic jam before you can move to the distal segments, but everything is always in the direction of flow from distal to proximal. So that's where the number of times people have run into a question where it's confusing and it all, always revolves or, or boils back down to this, that you must clear the proximal segments first. So you have to clear the abdomen and the groin before moving down to the knee and the ankle, but all strokes, all of the actual soft tissue mobilization strokes are in the direction of flow, indicating that you go from distal to proximal for all of those strokes. So in this case, we're talking about the bandaging gradient pressure and so that, that pressure gradient should always be the most or the greatest pressure at the distal segment and the least amount of pressure at the proximal segment. Because if you reversed it, if you had the greatest pressure at the proximal segment, it would act like a tourniquet and stop the flow of lymphatic fluid. Now, these other incorrect answer options, they all have a little nugget that's important to remember. So the bandaging, especially during the initial intervention phase, should be worn 24 hours per day rather than just 12 hours per day. In fact, it's it's quite advisable that they should be wearing it during sleep as well. 
as you move into the chronic or the, the maintenance phase of intervention, at that point, you're probably talking about some type of custom fit compression garment, a Velcro closure of some kind. However, in the initial intervention stage, when you're trying to reduce tissue load or fluid load in the tissue, you will be simply trying to apply that compression bandaging on a daily basis or every other day with uh, the target being that they'll wear it 23 to 24 hours per day with the only exceptions being for obviously hygiene uh, such as you know showering or or whatever and then changes during therapy if you wanted to change the dressing or if there was some type of wound to worry about again that that would be the case when you would those are the only cases you would remove the bandaging otherwise it should be worn 24 hours per day so this next one bandaging pressure should have a or bandaging should have a high resting pressure and low working pressure that's precisely opposite a short stretch bandage for lymphedema should have a low resting pressure and a high working pressure. So what does that mean? A low resting pressure means that it sits on the skin comfortably. It's like if you were to just rest your hand on your own arm right now, you'd say, all right, that's a low resting, but you're not squeezing it. You're not adding extra pressure. It's simply the weight of your hand sitting on your arm. Now, the reason or the, the key here with short stretch is that they don't stretch very much. Obviously, they're short stretch which indicates or means that it has a high working pressure. So it resists movement quite a bit. So therefore you create the muscle pump action with the almost like a, a semi-rigid shell that's comfortably placed on the skin. When you activate the muscles underneath of it, it starts to increase the flow of lymphatic fluid. And then finally, the last one related to this last incorrect answer is that bandaging wraps, they should stretch only to 30 or 40% of their unstretched length. This means that they are not very stretchy. They really only stretch about 30% of their unstretched, unstretched length, which means that they just don't stretch very much. They are maybe not rigid, semi-rigid. They, they have quite a firmness to them. And so therefore you place them on the limb. You don't, you don't like crank them down like a long stretch bandage, like an ace wrap. You'd certainly not do that. Rather with a short stretch bandage, you're applying it comfortably on the skin, a short amount of stretch, 30 to 40% of their unstretched length. And then that's being worn 24 hours per day during the initial intervention or the intensive intervention phase during the first part of treating lymphedema. So there you go. Again, the correct answer here was that bandaging pressure should be least at the proximal portion of the limb to maintain that pressure gradient, meaning that it's the highest pressure at the distal segments and the, and the least pressure, it's still pressure, but the least amount of pressure at the proximal segments, again, trying to drive the flow from distal to proximal. The bandaging should be worn 24 hours per day. It should have a low resting pressure, so comfortably on the skin, and a high working pressure, meaning it resists movement, and that bandaging wraps, the short stretch bandages, should only stretch to about 30 to 40% of their unstretched length. Uh, if you do anything more than that, then that would technically be a long stretch bandage where it stretches 50% or more of its unstretched length. They're very stretchy at that point. And uh, in fact, like ACE wraps, if I'm not mistaken, they stretch almost 100% meaning they'll, they'll double in length because of the elastic fibers contained therein. And that's interesting too, is that short stretch typically doesn't have a lot of elastic in it, like an actual elastic material. It's usually the weave that you're talking about that allows it to have some small amount of elasticity. But uh, generally speaking, we're talking about the low resting pressure, high working pressure, worn 24 hours per day with the pressure gradient from the distal segment being the greatest pressure to the proximal segment being the least pressure to promote that, that flow and avoid a, the tourniquet effect. All right, so there you go. There's a question about the lymphatic system. In fact, we've kind of touched on like all the questions I see on lymphedema. They're very often related to the bandaging, how to do appropriate bandaging. They're often related to your, your manual intervention, so manual lymphatic drainage technique, which again, just a reminder, that's only fingertip pressure. So it needs to be it's really quite light and quite superficial. It's not a deep tissue mobilization. It is quite superficial. Uh, talking about bandaging, talking about protocols for application of bandaging, talking about the manual lymphatic drainage technique. We talked about you clear out the proximal segments first, the distal segments later, but with the point being that you're always moving in the direction of flow from distal to proximal. And so, yeah, those that's where I see the questions on the lymphatic system. And we talk about that in a lot of our other episodes. So be sure to check out all the other episodes as we come to a conclusion here. Plus, if you haven't yet, it only takes, it takes just a second. Leave us a five-star review wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. Be sure to hit the subscribe. It helps a ton. 
as we're trying to get the word out. Plus, be sure to check us out over on the Instagrams, our Instagram handle at PT Final Exam. Got a lot of fun content coming out over there. Plus, uh, little video shorts that I think will help drive home some of these principles that we talk about here in the podcast. So again, be sure to follow us over on Instagram to get uh, yeah get the full scope of material that we're trying to drive out to you. Awesome. Okay, we'll bring it to a conclusion here today. Be sure to check out all the other episodes we've got. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Happy studying. Keep a grin on your chin. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.